Good evening, gang. Yes, look who's here with me. She's been extra snuggly with me over the last few days. I can see why. Now she wants to go. She's camera shy. <laughs> Not really. How's everybody doing? It's really, really windy here where I'm at. I'm sure where you're at. Uh, it must be the same thing, probably, if you're living, uh, you know, in along the Pennsylvania area or the, the, the Mid-Atlantic here. Uh, oh. I've been hearing it howling most of the day. And I continue just to be thankful to be in a nice, warm place. That's all I can say. I had the chance to listen to a really wonderful sermon that was done this past Sunday by um, Pastor Joe Foch of Calvary Chapel, Philadelphia, where, where I go to whenever possible, possible. And I'll tell you, it was food for my soul. It was comfort to my heart. It was beyond what I needed with everything that I've been going through this past week. Because as I said this morning, guys, I'm feeling so many emotions, it's not funny. I've got a lot of anger setting in, and I've been having to ask the Lord for help. I, I, I'm, I'm angry because I can't go into it, but it's, I know they say it's one of the stages of grief. But I, I'm, give, I'm choosing to give it to the Lord. I, ha, I have to every day, and it's funny. Uh, as I was reading this, and the the passage that uh, Pastor Joe was speaking on was Matthew chapter 5, verses 22, I just want to confirm, verses 22 through 43, and this is the story of Jairus, and you'll also read this in Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26, or also Luke 8, 41 through 56. This is a very telling, very powerful thing. It's one of three examples in Scripture where Jesus showed that he had power over death in the grave. And I discussed a bit in, in my post, which I want to go into with you a little too, uh, about the, the one instance, uh, which was Lazarus. The other was the widow's son from Nain, and here's Jairus' daughter. And Jairus, or Jairus as, as some people might pronounce it, he was a ruler of the synagogue. He was, according to one uh, commentary in this area, uh, he was, how do I describe this? He was a, a member of the synagogue. These rulers were Christ's bitterest enemies, according to one commentary, but there were some that respected Jesus, and this one had, a, had to have had a very favorable opinion of him, but probably was very scared. If you had the chance to listen to the sermon, you'll see what, what I'm talking about, because at this point... The battle lines were being drawn, especially with the religious leaders, Caiaphas and Annas and, this, and the Pharisees and, this, and all them. It was basically stated that if anybody chose to believe in Jesus, they were kicked out of fellowship in the synagogue and in the temple with their family, their the whole nine yards. But this, this, it says here in this particular commentary uh, that... This person seemed to have had a, a favorable opinion of Jesus and more than likely great faith in the power that, you know, that Jesus had. And I love how he says here in Mark 5 that when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. That He was, he was desperate. I mean, it, it's, it, 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 it says here in the commentary that this ruler must have had a very favorable opinion of Jesus and indeed done him so much honor as to worship or fall down before him saying, Master, my daughter is even now dead or at the point of death, but come and lay thy hand upon her and 
she shall live. This, his faith, was probably built on the miracles which he knew Jesus had performed. Here, here it says, at the point of death. And he says, I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. Jesus goes and follows them. And you see also in the midst of this, a slight hiccup, an interruption, but a good one, in which a widow, a woman with an issue of blood, that she's had this disease for 12 years straight and not gotten any better, she's cured because she has faith enough that if she touches Jesus' garment, she'll be made whole. Well, during this interruption, while he's dealing with this, while Jesus is dealing with this woman, uh, possibly the, the family members of Jairus come to him and say here in verse 35, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? In other words, don't bother. She's gone. Let, let's, let's not bother him. And I don't know how to describe this, but I, I think it was, you know, I'm trying to think of the right word here. I, th I think it was like, let's not inconvenience him. It's it's done and over with. But Jesus still came because it, 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 it says here, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, in other words, Pastor Joe Foch was describing this as he overheard it. But this is what he says to the ruler of the synagogue. This is what he says to Jairus. Be not afraid, only believe what a powerful statement. Pastor Joe was describing it as don't be afraid, but just keep believing. Don't lose your faith. And Pastor Joe gave such an eloquent, very powerful uh, picture of this poor man having just learned that his daughter died. And I felt this pain because of what I I. I've been experiencing since Tuesday. He's going through, as Psalm 23, verse 4 says, the valley of the shadow of death. He's going through this low moment, and I'm sure Jesus is still walking with, with Jairus, willing to go. As he says, don't be afraid. Keep believing. Just keep, keep your faith. This man's faith is shaken. But he, he chooses to... You know, let, let Jesus come with him. And Jesus is pro I mean, he's devastated. But I'm sure Jesus had to have been doing something to, to, to you know, who knows what, to comfort the man. And he gets there, and of course, they get to Jairus' house, and he sees the professional mourners. Yeah, that they, they actually had them. It was it's uh, really weird, uh, but uh, it, it describes it here uh, in in this. And, and this was what uh, Pastor Joe was talking about. In Matthew, it's described as um, minstrels and people making a great noise, or here as Mark the uh, tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. Basically, Jesus gets to the home and he sees the, the, this crowd of people. And back then, they paid. People made a living, literally. It says here in, in Matthew 9, 23, And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place. The maid is not dead, but sleepeth. Here in 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 Mark, it says as soon as it's it says here. Of course, the only the disciples he brings with him are Peter, James, and John, James's brother John. It says, and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. As I said, they were they were paid professional mourners. There wasn't just family there. There were strangers there that were paid mourners. This was a part of the culture, and they were making a racket over the, over this. And because you know, the, Jairus was a man of means. 
I mean, he was a man of means and a, and a man of position. And it was, a, 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 I don't know how to describe it, but th they made it their business to perform like this. And there were others that would sing to the music of the flutes and, and the minstrels and everything else. And apparently that, that minstrels were especially used on the death of children. That's interesting. I, I just saw that. But Jesus is like, what are you guys doing? This is ridiculous. This, he, he says here, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. He's like, why are you making all this racket? You know, why, why make ye this ado and weep? And, and of course, I love give, you know, you, you hear what Pastor Joe is saying at, the, at, at this. And they really believed that she was gone. Everybody believed that she was gone. And when he told them, she's not dead, she's only sleeping, they were like, what in the world are you talking about? And it says here, I want to read something from this particular commentary. It says, as the company at the ruler's house, when Jesus entered it, were employed in making such lamentation for the damsel as they used to make for the dead, it is evident that they all believed she was actually and finally departed. And when Jesus told them she was not dead, he did not mean that her soul was separated from her body, but that it was not to continue in a state of separation from it which was the idea the mourners affixed to the word death. His words must be observed, it must be observed, were spoken to those who were preparing for her internment and performing the funeral rites belonging to it and therefore only intimate, intimate that she was not so dead that they needed to make these preparations. So therefore, he therefore expresses her state by saying that she slept, using the word in a sense somewhat analogous to that which the Jews put upon it when speaking of a person's death. Well, bottom line here, that they just, that, that he was like, why are you doing this? You know, he was, he was, he, he was, he was really ticked, but he was trying to maintain his composure because he knows that they were grieving people. He sees the father, Jairus, and, and his wife, mother and father here, grieving over their little girl who's 12 years old. It states it here in, in Mark. And, 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 and it's like, you know, why are you making all, you know, because he knew that they were professional mourners. They really didn't care about this couple. They only cared about this and free food. And their response was they laughed him to scorn. It's, it says here, and they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him. That's Peter, James, and John. And entereth in where the damsel was lying. He wanted to point out, he wanted to prove something here. He wanted to prove something. He kept saying, he was probably still saying, Jairus, don't be afraid. Keep believing. Don't don't lose that, what it, don't lose your faith. And he goes to the little girl. He takes her, it says, and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kuma." Kumi, Kumai. And basically, that is Aramaic. And this is interesting. It says here, And he took her by the hand as if he had been go going to wake her out of sleep, and with a gentle voice, but such as the persons in the chamber could easily hear. He said, Talitha Kumai, which is damsel arise. That's, that's here out of Mark. It says, he, it says here, Dams, And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And she got up. You see verse 42, And straightway the damsel arose and walked. And here's the indicator, the indicator of her age. It says, For she was of the age of 12 years. And you see, this is... And, and Pastor was saying that they, they may not have known about the widow from Nain's son, because that had happened a couple of a few months before. And I'm sure word, as fast as it would travel, it probably didn't travel that fast. I mean, 
They didn't have Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram and all this other stuff. But here, this happens. And I love the, the, the next part. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. Pastor Joe's words were, they freaked out. Hey, if I saw something like that, I'd freak too. And of course, he, it says here, you know, when this happens, they're, they're like, it's beyond amazed. They're like, holy cow. You know, they're, they're like, they couldn't believe that this happened. You know, it, it was like, this has actually happened. Their daughter's back. And, you know, as I was listening to this and, you know, hearing what Pastor Joe was talking about, he, I was reminded of, you know, just remembering everything that's going on this past week. I, I hear Pastor Joe say how we human beings aren't, we're not designed to handle death. You know, we, we, we weren't given that because, you know, it was, it was sin that brought about the condition of death. And he was saying how, you know, we, we're not designed to handle it. But God is. God understands. And, and I praise God over it. I praise God that he understands right now what I'm going through. I praise God that he understands the moments I have where I just start crying my eyes out. The moments I have where I just go, I just get really upset. I get ticked off. And, and I've been having that. And it's because of some memories that are coming up uh, that I won't go into here because uh, I don't feel it appropriate. But I am choosing not to deny those things having happened. I choose to give them over to the Lord. And I've been, I continue to. But I choose to focus on the good, to focus on the godly man that my father was, that he always was. And I love how Pastor Joe was talking about how, you know, we're not designed to handle this. We can't handle it ourselves, but with God, we can get through it. You know, there's, there's talking about bereavement. And the comfort that we have as believers, those of us who know Christ as their Savior, we have a comfort that unbelievers don't. And that is this, and I want to share this with you. It's out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And it's something that I've been thinking about the last couple of days. And I want to share it with all of you. It says here in verse 13 of chapter 4, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And if you read further, it talks about a very momentous event that will take place that I can't wait for. And that's the, that's the rapture. When everyone who has accepted Christ as their Savior. Those who have passed on, like my father, his body may be dust and cremated, but I know he's really in heaven with my Savior. And I know there's coming a day when we're going to hear a trumpet sound and we're going to instantaneously be transformed with a glorified body, a body that will never die. The dead in Christ, like my father, they're going to rise first. They're going to be put together all brand new. You, you, you hear how Pastor Joe describes it. And it's and those who are alive and remain, those of us who are living, we're going to have the, the glorified bodies. Two will be instantly transformed and we'll never die. And... We don't know who, how long it's going to be till that. And that's going to be the hard part, not knowing. 
when we're going to see our family again, but I know that I will see my father again, and I thank God for it. I feel so just torn up inside right now. And I'll tell you, if it, if it wasn't for the Lord, especially the Lord giving me my husband Ricky and the precious promises of his word, I'd be, I'd be falling apart right now. Seriously. I, I would, I would know that I would see my father again, but it just, it wouldn't be the same because I, you know, by myself, but now, you know, I'm not, I, I thank God for, for my husband. And I said this morning, how badly I am in need of the Lord right now, as I have no choice but to just continue on with my life without my dad around. And to deal with all the emotions I'm feeling, to deal with all the, the, the craziness. And I, I, I know I'm going to have to grieve. I know that there's that bereavement. And one of the things I'm frustrated about is the, the way in which this happened. And, and I want to share something. I, I am encouraging everyone... I am encouraging everyone. I am, I am, I am lighting a fire under your butts. Those of you that have issues about going to the doctor, go to the doctor and listen to what they say. I love my father. I'm always going to. And I know he'll understand my saying this because he's with the Lord. And it won't matter now. But I'm urging you to do this because my father didn't. My father, as I said before, I love him, and he was a man of he was he was a man who loved the Lord with all his heart. He was stubborn. And this was one of the areas he was stubborn at. That's all I'm gonna say. But I am urging all of you, men and women who are watching this, who are listening to this. Treat your health as a very top priority. Make sure you go to the doctor, that you get checked up. Check, you know, get, get yourself checked up every year. Make sure that if there's anything up that you, you know, listen to whatever your doctor says. I know I've had to do that. I have at 47, going on 47, I have high blood pressure. I've had it for a while. And I now take blood pressure medication. And plus, I, I try to watch my diet. I'm not perfect at it, but I do the best I can. Uh, I've learned to eat in moderation. I've learned to eat healthier. But I, I, I've learned to listen to my doctor. And I'm urging you to do that, too. I don't want to see happen to you what happened to my dad. That's all I'm going to say. But most of all, I have a challenge for all of you who don't know Christ. I have a very big challenge. As you heard Pastor Joe say at the end of this, that there's no other way to heaven but through, through accepting Christ. For the, I, I'm challenging you. I've got a serious question for you. If you were to die right now, where in the world would you go? If you were to stand before God Almighty right now and he asked you, why should I let you into heaven? What's your response going to be? Oh, I was a good person. I kept the Ten Commandments. I followed Buddha, Allah, this, that, or the other deity. Trust me, you can do that all you want. It's not going to get you into heaven. It's not. God is a holy, righteous, just God. And I'm telling you right now, he is the only way to salvation. There's no such thing as many paths to heaven. There's no such thing as, you know, Buddha, Allah, or anything like that getting you into heaven. Ain't happening. Sorry. But I'm here to tell you, and I urge you, I pray that you will choose today I pray that if there are anyone if there's anyone out there 
that does not know Christ as their Savior, that they will come to know him before it's too late. I'm serious because, as I said again, there's no such thing as many paths or other ways to heaven. And for those of you that have bought into the bit that there's no such thing as God, that you're, you're being very deceived. He very much exists. He is just holy and righteous. He hates sin, but guess what? He loves you. And as Pastor said, he provided a substitute. And that was through his one and only son, sending him who willingly came here to die on the cross for you. But he didn't stay dead. He was buried. Three days later, he rose again from the dead. Proving even more so how he has power over sin, death, and the grave. And he's standing at the door of your heart right now asking to be let in. And if you let him in, he will forgive you of whatever sins you've done, no matter what it is. And I'm urging you, please call on his name today. He doesn't care what you've done, where you're from, anything about you. Just that you let him in your heart. And I'm inviting you to please come experience that same joy, that same peace, and more so. This isn't about church. This isn't about religion. This is about placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Please let the truth of Jesus set you free. Please. I've posted a link here on how you can come to know Christ. Click on that and read it and make that decision. If you want, I'll pray with you right now. Because this is something that you just don't want to put off. Just say something like this. You don't have to say the exact words, but mean it. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know that I have sinned against you. And because of this, it separates me from you. And that I am condemned to be in hell. Condemned to be separated from you forever to, in hell. That you, you're just righteous and holy and you can't stand sin. But Lord, I, I've just heard that you love me. And you loved me enough to send your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. That he was a willing sacrifice for my sins. He took my punishment and my shame, everything. And that he didn't stay dead, but he buried, He was buried and he rose again three days later. And Lord, I, I choose to confess with my mouth, to state with my mouth that I believe this. That I believe in my heart that God, you raised him from the dead. And I choose to, to believe in the name of the Son of God. And I ask you, Jesus, into my heart right now to save me. Cleanse me of my sins. Wash them away and make me whole. I want to be a part of God's family. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me from my sin. And I will serve you and love you for as long as I live, for as long as you will have me around. Thank you again. Amen. If you've done that, if you've if you've prayed that, if you've clicked on this link and followed what it said and meant it, I invite you to send me a message and let me know your decision and help allow me to point you in the right direction so you can start your new journey in Him. I I, I know it can be a difficult thing. But with God, everything is possible. And I, I want to reach out to those who are experiencing loss, who have experienced loss, that if you know Christ as your Savior, especially, just remember you're going to see that person again. And it's okay to grieve. It's okay to cry. It's okay to blow your stack if you need to. I'm doing that right now, but also... Don't be afraid. Just keep believing. I have to get going. Uh, just got a whole bunch of things to do today. But I really wish you all a really wonderful evening. And I also want to uh, point you in the, right, in the direction of a, a GoFundMe page that was started for my mom to help with funeral expenses because... Um, we, uh, right now, we don't know if there's any insurance policy. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I don't. Th we're, we're trying to confirm it, but please, it helps with funeral expenses and and expenses right now for my mom because she's now 
by herself and with my two learning mentally challenged brothers. So it would really help. As I said, got to get going, but I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful evening. And don't be afraid. Just keep believing. Bye for now.